Accused Idaho killer Brian Koberger is offering up an alibi trying to show he didn't and couldn't have murdered four college students in November of 2022. His attorney filing court documents saying, quote, Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022, as he often did, to hike and run and or see the moon and stars. As they claim, he was just out there stargazing and not anywhere near the off-campus house where he's accused of stabbing four University of Idaho students to death. Take a look at a map of the area in question. You see Pullman, Washington there on the, uh, the top left. That's where Koberger was a uh, graduate student at uh, Washington State University. This isn't the best map ever, I'll admit. Um, on the right is Moscow, Idaho, where the students were killed on King Road. Now take a look at the Huawei County Park, bottom left. This is where his attorney says Koberger was the night of the murders. It's about 25 miles southwest of Moscow, Idaho. The alibi goes on to say, quote, this is supported by data from Mr. Fo Koberger's phone, showing him in the countryside late at night and or in the early mornings on several occasions. The phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several different late evenings and early mornings, including in November, depicting the night sky. His defense team plans on using an expert to testify and try to prove that Koberger's cell phone was south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, on the night of the killing. Remember, prosecutors have also used cell phone data, but they've matched it with surveillance footage of what authorities say is Koberger's white Hyundai Elantra near the scene of the crime at 3.30 in the morning. That same car spotted driving by a few times before, speeding away about a half hour later after the students were stabbed. And of course, his DNA was allegedly found on a knife sheath at the crime scene. Back with me is Jesse Weber, anchor for the Law and Crime Network. We're also joined by Joseph Scott Morgan. He's a top forensic expert and distinguished scholar at Jacksonville State University. Thanks very much for coming on the program. All right, uh, let, me, let me start with you, uh, Joseph. How does this work? You're going to have, what, two experts, one for the defense who's going to say the cell phone data shows them 25 miles away, and another one is going to say that the cell phone data shows them right there? Uh, that's that's apparently what they're going to put forth, Dan. And, and here's another one. If you like that one, here's another one. The defense is actually saying that he never even crossed the state line into Idaho, that he remained in Washington the entire time. And by the way, he actually went to this park that was his favorite location for apparent stargazing that locks its gates at 7 p.m. at night. Now, I'm not saying he couldn't have parked outside and wandered into the park, but, you know, here, here's the rub with that. You're talking about a night, and check the forecast data, uh, you know, of ice, fog, there was low-level fog, and there was an overcast sky. Now, unless he has some kind of special ability to gaze up at the stars, I, I don't see how this, how this, fits in. It's it's a strange route to go down. And particularly, as you well pointed out, the state has plotted his movements down very, very thoroughly. But and what they've done, Jesse, is the state has combined the surveillance video with cell phone footage and they follow the car until the next day. And you see Koberger eventually getting out of that car. Nobody talks about that. Enough. Right. Like that was one of the ways they matched him as the driver of the right. car. We're forgetting the phone turns off at the key time when the killings happen. And uh, law enforcement said that shows that's what a killer does. And I'm very curious to know if their expert, who's Cy Ray, by the way, a former police officer, specialist in cell phone data, testifies in a number of trials, probably seen him in a number of documentaries. He's a big witness. But it, it, how are they going to explain, you know, the phone is off? I guess they're saying that's something we'll work with. Since the phone is off, we can't say where he is, so we'll just show that there, he couldn't have been near the crime scene. Yeah, he was at his apartment, but, and we saw but him come back Joseph, to Joseph, I understand a bit of ambiguity when it comes to cell phone data, right? It's not exact. It can't tell you exactly where someone was. But having two experts coming and saying that it, it sounds yeah. like they're saying it was hitting completely different cell towers, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is, that's what's being implied, and, and there are a ton of cell towers in this area. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.